That's 12. Now 13. Um, this is the gambling policy uh, discussion um, document. Can you, can you um, read? I think the officers have done a pretty good job here. This, this, as you'll see in the in the uh, document, this is a matter which Where this council's reported on and put Correct. submissions on uh, well, many times in recent years. Query. And uh, this is another uh, submission in the same ilk. So I don't think there's any. I think there is submission by, by Rebecca Turner she, is, is a very good submission. And so I'm going to move it. I move the motion. Seconded. seconded by Councillor um, Casey. I thought you'd gone for lunch, Councillor Casey, but you're back. Good on. Thank you. Reporting you to my union. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> well, hang on. He's the union boss. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> you. Okay, so you. if there's no discussion, I'll put the motion. Uh, just one thing to say that yeah. I, I, I really like the emphasis on. Um, page 91, our page 91, with regard to Sky City Casino and the recent easement of their, of their, um, of the, <coughs> the gambling laws to allow them to have 470 extra pokies. While we are trying to have a sinking lid policy to reduce it, we have the government coming in with the other hand and plonking almost 500 right in the middle of Auckland. So thank you for pointing that out, and it's in several places. I appreciate it. We are not trying to have a thank you. policy. We do. Um, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Aye. Against? No. Declare that carried. Yep. So have we got time for... Said no. George. Sorry. Keep going, George. I am. Well... It is half past. All right, we'll adjourn for lunch. Um, and unfortunately, the officers uh, were here for the, uh, for the, but, but it may take a bit of time, so I think we'll. We'll, we'll have a short lunch, Mr. Chair. A short lunch, quick yeah. lunch. Okay, down she goes. <laughs>than usual because, the, the, because of a briefing by the Chief Executive and the Mayor. Uh, so oh, it probably right. would be so helpful if we could Get go through this. the rest of the items here before we oh, adjourn. I agree. Uh, I agree. I agree. And, and can we Mr. Do that? Chairman, there were some rules set down about giving councillors some breaks to move around, to visit the toilet and to do whatever else. It's, it's, we, have you know, we have those rules. Now, I don't know wh when you last read them, but well, you, you can't do this. Five minutes be enough or not. Shall we have yes. a break for five minutes? Not too late, no. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, I think the pain okay. is surpassed. Okay, we'll move on to item Got number. <laughs> item yeah. 14. We're the worst manager of our Oh, shit, it's all getting right. You're absolutely right. Fun, isn't it? This is. I don't want to leave now. This is the Brown submission. Now, this, this matter has actually been through a working party group of councillors. Um, we had that discussion just the other day, didn't we? We did indeed. Um, and I think we we kind of arrived at a um, situation where wasn't well, it was a reasonable consensus or support yep. from what Mr. Uh, Brown has got in the submission. We've got the legal people here, so I think that should. Okay, we'll go through the present. Go through the presentation. So uh, through the chair, the presentation is quite hev high level. It just outlines the recommendations that we're making. Um, the proposal was just to speak very quickly to say what the bill does and what our recommendation is in response to the bill. Um, firstly, uh, apologies. A version of the submission is being circulated, I think, at the present. Um, version 9. So um, we'll speak to the changes that have been made since the document was circulated on Tuesday. Um, apologies for that late circulation. The bill, as you may have heard from some of the media coverage over the last week or so, is quite a complex bill. Um, the bill uh, is also somewhat awkward in the way in which it applies to Auckland. So the bill applies generally, but then there are exemptions because of our particular structure and the leg legislation in the Auckland uh, Local Government Auckland Council Act. Um, there are a few parts that need some clarification as to how the bill works, but we'll address those as we go. Um, if I could have the next slide. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you. 
Um, so uh, first item is really that the submission itself is steered by general support for the intent. Um, the changes that it largely looks to deliver are already here in Auckland um, and we're, we're working with them. The main perspectives on the bill address itself to how it is that, uh, or what changes might be useful to better address the way Auckland Council as a group can focus on urban issues and also to improve the workability of the bill. Um, there are a number of drafting errors that have been picked up or seem to have occurred which are also sought to be clarified. Thank you. Um, the framework of the bill is enabling. Um, it has within it a series of checks and balances. It's very hard to indicate what the particular outcome might be of any uh, reorganisation investigation. Um, the decisions are made independently by the Local Government Commission and they will be made on the circumstances of the case. Um, as we know, local government is um, a <coughs> one structure or system, but the circumstances in which it operates around the country are very varied. Um, what we are suggesting is that in regard to those checks and balances, there would be some specific changes. We also make some specific changes in terms of um, the Maori Treaty Waitangi issues, rates, rebates, tax and performance measures. Um, just very quickly, um, still not having a clicker, here we go. Um, there's a new purpose for the reorganisation process. Um, it is about good local governance, but also infrastructure and services. We are seeking amendments through the bill where it would reflect that purpose of good governance. Um, we also see that through the changes, um, some of the former requirements in terms of community participation have been reduced and we're seeking that those also uh, be improved. And uh, whereas the ability for anyone to apply to the Commission to initiate in, or request a, an investigation, we uh, note that some of the matters that the Commission would have regard to have changed. Uh, many that relate to the substance of the application have been reduced <coughs> and we would like them to be reinstated. Um, perhaps for your guidance, if I could direct you perhaps to page 21 of the submission, all of the recommendations are set out in full in a table form. It might just um, be a little bit easier to cross-reference as we go. Um, so those first items there, 3.1.1, 3.1.2 and 3.1.3, are set out on page uh, 21. The next item... Um, also seeks retention of a previous provision, um, and that was that where there is a reorganisation, the Commission can determine that there will be a period, a moratorium period, through which no further reorganisation applications would be entertained. Um, that is absent from the new process, and we would like that to be re-established. Um, there are a number of powers vested in the Minister of Local Government under the proposed bill. Um, we are suggesting that it would be appropriate for those, for the exercise of those powers to be subject to the purpose of reorganisation and the purpose of the Local Government Act. Um, those are at the bottom of uh, page 21 and over on page 22. Um, the other item there is that the Commission is set up much like an SOE type model um, there will be a statement of intent and there will be Minister's expectations. Um, we feel that it is also appropriate that the Minister be requested or required to publish their expectations to give greater visibility to the section as to the matters that the Commission will be turning its mind to over the period of the statement of intent. Um, oops, at the bottom of the page there, holds. Um, an issue that has uh, been apparent and much commented on around the country is the reorganisation process makes uh, or uh, introduces the ability to uh, transfer activities between authorities. Um, however, um, 
transfers to CCOs are not addressed by the requirements for a poll as they would be for a local authority. Uh, we think that that's something that should be addressed. Um, and again, it's in support of community participation. Um, consistent with that line, but looking to um, streamline the process where appropriate, uh, we would also be suggesting that no poll is required where all of the affected local authorities support the reorganisation. Um, this would be consistent with the new power that's put into the process where local authorities themselves can attend to reorganisations. Um, for Māori and Treaty of Waitangi issues, there are a number of provisions in the bill and in the schedules that it provides for um, that require uh, consultation with iwi um, and to protect arrangements where there might be um, shared governance, um, but also where there are arrangements under Treaty of Waitangi settlements or negotiations, there is a requirement um, that there is consultation with the Attorney General and the Minister of Treaty Negotiations. Uh, we feel that provision could be um, strengthened and that a report is required uh, for a reorganisation plans adopted. Rates rebates, um, it's an issue that you might well be familiar with where um, a licence to occupy in retirement villages and payment of water charges to a CCO are ineligible <coughs> for rates rebates. Um, we are suggesting that these issues need be addressed. Um, we note that in extending the model uh, for water services CCOs to the country, um, <coughs> it becomes more of a national issue than one that was particular to Auckland. Um, this is one where, and like some that follow, where there is the two-tiered approach of the bill to Auckland. In the first instance, we think that CCOs should be taxed similarly to local authorities in certain circumstances, but at the same time that there's no change to the rules as they currently apply in Auckland, um, those being set up under the legislation that applies here. Um, certainly another area that we're in support of is that the Commission need to address itself and identify the implications of any tax um, or tax implications that arise through a reorganisation and make them visible to the public and could do that as a, but prior to a reorganisation plan being published. Okay. Uh, <coughs> performance measures. Um, this is one that the Council has played, uh, paid sorry, quite a bit of attention to over the last while. Um, we have greatly reduced the number of um, performance measures that we have in the LTP, um, which has led to a much more effective regime. Um, the bill sets up the power for the Minister to introduce new rules. Um, similarly, there is a provision for the Secretary of Local Government to do likewise, and also in terms of um, corporate accountability uh, requirements into the LTP. Uh, we have no objection per se to these powers, um, but rather would request that there is consultation with Auckland Council before any new requirements are uh, developed or introduced, that uh, it would be some time after introduction before those measures have to be reported on to give time to um, manage, uh, uh, improve, uh, amend our systems. <coughs> um, and second, thirdly, we would like the um, Commission to provide implementation guidelines on any performance measures that might be introduced. Um, we turn now to those provisions of the bill that have particular um, significance or implications for Auckland, and this is how they work through the um, Local Government Act in conjunction with the Local Government Auckland Council Act. Um, firstly, some general issues, and then the uh, statement of intent and the ability of shareholders, and then development contributions. Just the next slide. Thank you. Um, as foretold earlier, that largely what we're looking for is the bills working to be clarified as to how it applies to um, CCOs in Auckland, particularly our substantive CCOs. Um, there are various provisions and references in the bill where it's not quite clear. Um, the difficulty arises because a substantive CCO is defined in the bill, um, whereas Auckland's substantive CCOs are separately defined in the Local Government Auckland Council Act. And it's just saying, um, it requires 
refinement, and it would be preferable if there was one uh, definition of a substantive CCO. Um, statements of intent. Um, the bill through the new or replacement Schedule 8, um, which applies to CCOs, introduces the requirement that CCOs give effect to shareholder comments on draft statements of intent. This is a slightly different standard to what currently applies in Auckland, um, which is to have regard to. Um, we would like that clarified that the um, new term, give effect to, also applies in Auckland. <coughs>